Hello everyone, welcome back to lesson two. This is the third part. I am gonna spend the majority of the next uh, five or six minutes talking about experimental research. Um, in the last video, I briefly went over what experimental research is. You've seen this slide already. It is done in highly controlled conditions, such as a laboratory. And I want to look at the variables, because a variable is anything in, that can and will be changed in, in an experiment. We have the independent variable. The independent variable is what is changed, OK? So the IV is what is changed, what is manipulated in the experiment. And the independent variable is what is going to affect uh, the dependent variable. The dependent variable is what is what is affected by the independent variable and the dependent variable usually is what is being studied which is the effect. Um, so you can have multiple um, independent variables but you usually only have one dependent variable and it's usually again what is being changed. So in experimental research you usually ask the question what which is the I um, the IV is being affected, or what is affecting what. Um, and there you see the definition of a confederate. We're going to actually talk about a specific study done by um, a man named Ash um, to look at conformity, and that, and he uses confederates and their pseudo subject in a social experiment. In psychology, we use what's known as the scientific method. You guys all should know about this because you've done it every year um, in elementary school and, and, and beyond. The scientific method is used in psychology because, again, psychology is a science. It is empirical. It's based on empirical research. Um, we So essentially, this is the scientific method for psychology. We observe some phenomenon or some behavior, or we select a topic to be studied. We formulate a hypothesis, and we make predictions. The third step is that we do the research. We actually do the testing. We do the empirical studies. Number four is we draw conclusions. And number five is we evaluate the studies. Let's look at a couple of these uh, closer. For example, um, in in which we in the first step, which is select a topic, we want to look at a good theory. A good theory has predictive power. It is simple and pretty straightforward. And it is about a broad set of ideas or a broad idea um, of closely or close related ideas that attempt to explain some sort of observation. We want to formulate hypotheses, which are uh, specific statements of expectation. And usually in the hypothesis, we're going to state the relationship between the two variables. So you're going to see some correlation some correlational research in experimental research. And again, there's the definition of a variable because that is how important that word is. A variable is any event, characteristic, condition, or behavior that can be changed. In the testing, we have to do it through empirical testing. It has to be directly observed and it has to be replicable. We have to be able to replicate the study. If you cannot replicate the study, it is not a valid study and will not be uh, accepted in the psychological world. And we, from the or after the experiment, we look at the conclusions, what the data says that will then lead us to draw our conclusions. The data needs to be able to be replicated pretty close to, if not like exactly. And we, oh, there's a problem on this slide because it says to be proven. Remember this, please, a theory or uh, 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 an observation can never be proven. It can only be disproven or supportive. And the evaluation of the theory really is last. And it is, it really never changes. People are always going to replicate your studies. People are always going to retest them. They're always going to try and uh, put them as, or, or claim that they're invalid of some sort. We'll talk about this when we talk about specific studies that we're going to uh, look at in class. Experimentation has to be replicable. It has to be replicable. Other researchers can and should retest your procedure and get a, a valid outcome. We also look at the ecological validity of an experiment, whether or not it is a uh, real life, uh, and that, and it, whether or not it focuses on the processes that can occur in real life. And we'll talk about those specifically when we talk about specific research. We always also look at the rep, uh, the reliability and the validity of research. Reliability means uh, the consistency of the measurements. You should be able to replicate research and get very similar if not the same data and then we look at the validity means the accuracy of the of the measurements if it's not valid then it cannot be considered to be uh, actual research okay <clears throat> 
We're also going to look at types, types of groups. And it, you guys know that in, in, in research of any kind, you actually have to divide your, your uh, subjects or, your, or whatever you're looking at uh, into different groups. And these are the experimental group and the control group. Experiments can involve one or more groups. And again, I told you that um, usually there are uh, different or more than one independent variable. But researchers manipulate the changes or the variables to the independent variable uh, to create the groups. So the experimental group is going in, in the study is going to be made up of those who are exposed to the change in the independent variable. The control group are ones that are not exposed to the change in the independent variable. And this is how they do uh, drug trials, actually. And there is a, a, a key term that you need to know specifically with uh, drug trials but placebo is a harmful substance it's usually a sugar pill some problems with um, experimenter or experimental research or any research really is experimenter bias experimenter bias occurs when the experimenter's expectations influence the uh, research to get around this usually there is a what's called double blind uh, study and this is a study which in, in which the experimenter nor the participant knows which is the experimental or which is the control group another problem is what's known as the Hawthorne effect and this is what I was talking about with observing Hawthorne effect is says that people tend to behave differently when they know they're being observed and so you might not get actual normal behavior and then we have the placebo effect and this it occurs when participants expectations rather than the treatment influences the outcome and this is um, a way we get around this is with a single blind study in which the participant is unaware whether or not they're in the experiments or, or the control group and this is usually drug trials all right, I hope you've enjoyed um, lesson two. We will talk about research from here on out. So this is a super ex important lesson. I realize it's gone over a little bit and, and I didn't stay on the 15 minute goal, but I hope you've enjoyed. Good luck on the quizzes and I will see you in class.